Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon for the session on responding to change. Um, I, I'm, I'm especially pleased to be able to deliver this session um, because even before COVID-19, uh, businesses in general were at extreme pressure to be able to, uh, um, to be flexible, to be entrepreneurial, to be able to respond to an ever-changing environment. Um, so it, it's, it's really... It's really relevant now and to be fair uh, across the board in terms of the way that we respond to change uh, in an ever changing world. But of course, in the last few months, we've been subjected to a huge amount of change due to COVID-19, ever changing environment, ever changing social restrictions that we, you know, so we've had to undergo a, a, an, an incredible uh, amount of uncertainty that has impacted us in all sorts of different ways. Okay, so most people view change with a mixture of scepticism, of fear and dread. Um, to be honest, it's rarely wholeheartedly embraced. So what it is that I want you to do on, during this session is just stop, okay? Just reflect and assess the changes that are impacting, or assess the environment that you're in and the changes that you've had to be uh, uh, to, to go through and cope with. And then uh, ultimately start to think about where you go next. So. My name is Andy Jackson. I'm an Entrepreneur Acceleration Manager with the NatWest Entrepreneur Accelerator. Uh, I'm based out of the hub in Bristol, but the, uh, the NatWest Entrepreneur Accelerator is a whole network of hubs across the country um, in place to help high impact entrepreneurs, businesses, CEOs, uh, founders uh, of, of high impact businesses to grow and scale. So working directly with entrepreneurial managers, entrepreneurial leaders, um, I work with them to, uh, to, to, to really focus on the things that are, are important right now. So clarify the context and really and focus on what this, uh, what's important right now so that they can develop as leaders, but also through that, develop their business and grow and scale rapidly. So I work one to one with people. And over the last uh, few months, certainly the last sort of eight or nine months, there's, I mean, we're having lots of conversations around where do we go next? What do we need to do? The environment isn't, uh, isn't uh, you know, part of, uh, um, isn't what it is that I'd planned on. Okay, well, let's see where it is that we need to be thinking and how do we manage that going forward? Change is ubiquitous and it's continuous. This is a, a fairly standard, uh, um, a fairly standard saying that I think most people will have heard. The only constant is change. The other constant, to my mind, is communication because that communicates change uh, throughout the world, both in our heads uh, and functionally. Um, and it's that point I want to make first. You know, so where is change? What is change in terms of what is it actually? Is it a functional thing? Or is the vast majority of change our perception of it and the way that we deal with it? Well, I would challenge that's the real thing that we need to get to grips with is how we perceive change and therefore how we deal with it. So an equation that you might want to have a look at and just bear this in mind. To be honest, if there's nothing else that you take from this, this is, this is a critically important thing. So E plus R equals O. Event plus reaction or response equals outcome, okay? So if you take away the response, event equals outcome, basically it's basically saying you have no control. There's nothing going on. You know, so there's nothing that you can do about an event. Well, clearly there is, because as soon as we impact ourselves, as we apply ourselves to a, to a specific situation, then the outcome can change. How we respond to a particular context can change. OK, um, a, a story to, to, to illustrate that I was talking with a good friend of mine and we we're having a deep philosophical conversation around change and how we react to it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and a few weeks later, he came back to me. He said, Andy, I have to tell you, the way you know, that conversation that we had really has, has made a significant difference to me um, and my whole life. And I went, whoa, hey, stop, you know, come on, tell me about this, because you don't get that kind of response very often. He says, well. Um, you know, when I come back from, from school at the end of the day, he's a teacher, by the way, um, when I come back from school at the end of the day, there was a particular occasion not so long ago, it had been a rubbish day, it was raining, I got home, I had this prospect of, 
a whole evening's worth of work and marking and it's like you know i just wasn't looking forward to that i got through the door and because it had been wet and raining the, the kids had just left their stuff all over the floor in the entrance hall and i said i blew my top uh, I blew my top. Uh, the kids were sort of grumpy for the rest of the evening, you know, and I, I just didn't put me in a good mood. You know, I sat there at the dinner table with nobody spoke. And then I went to my work in the evening and it was just a horrible, horrible evening. And he said, but we had that, you know, in remembering that conversation, he said, it's my response to those circumstances that determined the way that that evening panned out. He said, so I, tr I tried something different. He said, when I it, it sort of happened again and he got home and he said instead of blowing my top and feeling depressed about the evening I just reminded myself that I teach because I want to make a difference I I, I looked at that situation and I go actually the work that I've got to do this evening I, I you know it's the purpose it's the reason why I'm here so okay I sort of rationalize that and my family is my life I work and I and I and I love my family. I work to 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 be able to provide for my family. So so actually, when I put the key in the door, I took a big deep breath, opened the door, and okay, on that occasion, the kids had still put their stuff on the floor. It was still a mess, but you know, I ignored it. I put my stuff down. I shouted to the kids, "Hey, I'm home!" Went through to work to my wife, and opened a bottle of wine. And throughout the rest of the evening, it was just a you know significantly different place to be. You know, and, and before we got to that point, he said, you know, I had a bit of a laugh and a joke with the kids and I got them to pick their stuff up. So but it was exactly the same scenario. But I responded to it to it differently and I got a completely different outcome. And that I, I now remember that. And so even when I now go into a classroom, I'm not looking forward to a particular class. I go, hey, hold on. I'm here for a reason. Let's change my own attitude to this and let's drive forward with some level of positivity. So the point from that is our response to any situation determines the outcome. How do you respond? Well, typically we react or respond, broadly speaking, very simplistically, in, in one of three ways. You can be the kind of person that's non-active in a particular context or situation. So those are the people who are probably going to be in denial about the situation. OK, resist change. Don't do anything about it. Let's face it, it, it will move on. And, you know, if we don't do anything, eventually it'll come back round and we'll just be able to carry on. OK, I'll hold my hand up. That was me about nine months ago, March, April time. Just wait, give it lockdown. We'll we'll come out the other end and then we can just carry on as usual. All right. Back, we'll be back in our holds we'll back in the offices by the middle of summer. OK. All right. So maybe not quite so helpful in those terms. Um. But also non-active can be sort of bury your head in the uh, uh, bury your, your head in the sand. If we don't address it, it's not really there. It doesn't exist. Okay, uh, uh, and then we can just move on after that. But also, that you could be a reactive type of person, the person who goes right. Okay, we've had something happen to us. We need to do something right now because if we don't do something now, right now, it's all going to go horribly wrong. Okay, so make the, under pressure to make a quick decision. Okay, so you might not have all the necessary facts. But a decision is made anyway, okay, to, to, to alleviate the immediate stress. It's a knee-jerk reaction, okay? The, the, these, the individual who found out they may lose their job, freak out, okay, visit, visit 30 placement agencies, okay? But the following Monday, they got a new job. So, so the, there's all sorts of different ways. Reactive is not always the best way. I would argue that the best way to handle all of these kind of situations is positive, proactive. Okay, this kind of response is the one where you just take your time, think about the change, get to know, understand the whole context, the whole situation, gauge it, make a calculated decision to take to, to move forward. Okay, you know what to focus on. You know what the positive outcome needs to look like. Okay, and in those terms, then you can start to take action. Now, this is obviously the, the, the most proactive, the best way to move forward in those terms, okay? Because the way, if, if we know more about a situation, we can minimize our fears, we can actually be more in control ultimately of this situation. So this is all about being change ready. It's having the right attitude, being change ready in terms of, 
you know, being open, act, being actively participate, actively participating in the world where things are constantly changing. So your mindset should be that actually I recognize change happens. It happens all the time. And, and it's not necessarily the change in itself, the changing environment, the context I'm in. It's, it's, it's the way that I respond to that. So let's get comfortable with it. OK, I'll, I'll get comfortable with not knowing everything. I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to be much more aware of what's going on. I'm also going to be adaptable. I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be equipping myself so that I can move fast, be agile, open to learning. OK, and when I'm required to, I will execute at pace. If I need to take action and it's urgent, I'm just going to go for it. But here's the thing. OK, that means everybody in the team, not just you. Because if you're the only one that's thinking positively and proactively, but everybody else is running around like a headless chicken, yeah, or sticking their head in the sand, then it's still going to be a tough situation to be in. So this is about getting the team on board into in all of these terms as well. OK, so some things to think about. Developing that change ready mindset. There's a number of things just to bear in mind. So number one, have a clear vision. Now, overall, as a business leader, it might be that I know where is it, I know where this business is going. I know what I want to achieve. I've got a very clear vision about that. But why have you got a clear vision of the short term future that might get you through this period of change? So have a clear vision as to where it is that you want the, the, the business to be, where it is that you want to be, where it is that you want your team to be to be able to get through this challenging period. But keep things in perspective. It's not the end of the world. You know, the, the things do might well, will need to change, but it doesn't have to be a bad change. So be positive, be optimistic, bring people along and help them to understand that there are going to be great outcomes. There is a real positive there's potential for a positive outcome here. So let's work towards that rather than worry too much about what could happen. Let's work on what we want to happen. So be practical in its application. Be persistent in your uh, um, uh, in your delivery of change of the, the actions required to really start to move forward with this proactively okay be patient it's not going to happen overnight but if you stay focused then things will come good okay so that whole change ready mindset and attitude these are the characteristics that you and your team it's really useful to have this culturally so that, you know, as a high performance team, you can really work towards uh, ensuring that you're ready, able and willing to cope with change. So there's the first challenge. What do you need to do to get your mindset in place? And what does your team need to do to be able to or what do you need to do to help your team or the people around you to get ready for that? OK. So that's the first thing that we can think about, getting that change ready mindset in place, your attitude to, towards the whole concept and thinking about the things that you can do to ensure that you're ready to move forward. Let's have a look now at understanding the, some of the considerations around change and some of the, uh, the things that we might do uh, by way of process to address change positively and proactively. OK, so firstly, Let's just understand the constituent parts of, of, of change, the things that we need to think about to be able to move things forward. Now, change is based on the requirement change, the, the need to change is based on the fact that we're looking at what's happening right now and there is dissatisfaction. I'm not happy with the current situation. I'm not happy with the present. Therefore, I need to create a new, I need to change where we're at right now and move towards something uh, that's much that's uh, that's much more positive or much more in line with where it is that I wear uh, well, what I want and where I want to be. OK, so what's that vision of the future, that future state that you're after? OK, now this is a critical aspect, OK, because understanding that future vision, that future state is going to be some time in the future. There's going to be a point at which you say, well, actually, if I plan for this, it might be one month, three months, six months. It could be, you know, that, that strategic planning could be years in advance. But if you just think about now and the situation that we're in, thinking six months in advance, we are going to be in a different situation again. So changing things now and looking forward to implementing a, a new strategy 
that will be in place in six months time what will that six months what will next june what will next uh, may and june next year what will that actually look like well it's entirely possible possible given the fact that we've got vaccines on the go that actually we could back to a new normal now what's that new normal going to look like so the point here is you've got to do your research as to what the future will look like not just in terms of what you think you want but also what the environment will look like because it won't be the same as today okay um an example i was speaking with one of my um uh, one of my businesses uh, recently uh, and they were saying right we're thinking of moving out of our offices because actually working from home right now means that actually there's the potential to change to save sixty five thousand pounds a year on office space all right okay then let's, let's let's just have a look at that let's just have a look at, uh, at what that might mean so uh if you were to change if, if you move forward to an environment where you are uh, a distributed workforce there's no central base and everybody works from home okay now let's just analyze what that might look like so six months time we're back potential even if it was a year's time we're back to a new normal and actually everybody's working from home but you've got not, haven't got a central office to go go to all right everybody's now working from home so their their base of work their place of work contractually will be their home so every time they leave the home to be able to go to a uh, um go to a meeting or everything you've got to pay their expenses okay um so how are you going to invest in uh, in setting them up at home so that there is a, um, a health and safety safe environment for that from them to for them to work in? OK, you're going to have to get together on a regular basis to be able to meet. So all of this conversation go on. So it's it's understanding that future and what that future might look like so that actually the, the right strategy can be put in place. So that's the next bit is strategy. If you understand what the future might be, that vision of the future, you need to understand what the strategy is and what you're going to do to get there. And then, of course, what do you need in terms of resources, equipment, people? OK, does there need to be a change in the team to be able to enable you to achieve that future? Um, so that's the equation for change in, in terms of thinking specifically about our current environment. OK, then the, then the impact of COVID-19 has had has had um, uh, uh, impact across the board, okay, in so many different ways. Now, those of you are familiar with the PESTLE tool, okay, great tool to help you analyze external influences. Um, obviously, COVID-19 had much more significant and overt impact than on, on many businesses, L lots really significant. PESTLE can be really useful um, more generally to look at the various aspects, uh, opportunities, threats surrounding a business. So in considering the political environment, well, you might not necessarily want to go there, but the, the extent to which uh, government and government policy can affect, uh, uh, impact you, your organization, the industry, okay? Uh, political policy, stability, trade, fiscal, taxation policies, all of these things can be consideration. Economic factors, the impact on the economy, its performance, we're going to get bounced back, uh, OK, when we get to a new normal and the vaccine starts to run out. But, you know, how long is it going to take for you, your business to actually start getting back on track? And the social factors, technological factors, environmental factors, all of these things. If you don't know this, um, uh, if you don't know the PESTLE tool, look it up, have a look at the different considerations around that tool uh, and then see how it applies to you. See how some of those things might apply to you. Um, now, in terms of the COVID uh, uh, situation, the NatWest has been doing research uh, around some of the mega trends, some of the things that have uh, impacted all of us that perhaps it's worth just having a look at. So there's four things primarily, but number one, resetting relationships, okay? So this is where we are, uh, you have to consider or at least understand that the way that we interact and the quality of the nature of our relationships has been redefined at the moment we are moving we have moved and are in a much more digital world okay our interactions and relationships are digitally remote based will that always be the case is that the way that it makes sense for you to operate okay so it, it, there are some things in what we're doing right now that's widening socio-economic groups so that might be a consideration as well. The whole concept of place of work, 
um, is uh, um, is something to consider as well. My example earlier of, of the business that I work with that's looking to give up their place of work, their office space. Okay, so we're working remotely at the moment. A lot of us are working from home at the moment. There's a there's almost a dislocation uh, of where we live, where we play, where we work, the extent to which we travel. I think there will be some people who will be quite happy to work from home permanently. Others, not so much. Others perhaps can't uh, because of their personal circumstances at home. Um, and of course, there are going to be some roles where it's just not possible to work from home. You have to go to a place of work to be able to do what it is that you, you, know, you, you are paid to work for. Okay. Third one, reassessing value and values. But what's important to you, to, to us, economically, socially, and personally? How do we value that? Okay, so what's important to you? Is it, is it health? Is it the whole challenge that we have at the moment around mental, physical, family, social type, uh, or societal type of issues? Okay, but then the, perhaps there's a refocus on the importance of education. Now, how is education going to be delivered? There's all sorts of things that we might have to reconsider in terms of, you know, what is uh, what we need to think about in terms of change. But the last one on there, building res resilience. This is about developing the financial and intellectual support, uh, uh, support structures uh, to withstand the unexpected. How many businesses are you, are you suffering at the moment because of the financial challenges that, uh, that have been placed on you? So actually, when we get back to some kind of normal, what plans are you considering to ensure that you have a financial, a robust financial framework that can perhaps cope with the kind of challenges that we've been facing over the last six months. Okay, so there's lots of things there, and the impact of COVID, uh, COVID uh, over the, over 2020 has been significant. There's some things to think about that. So, in terms of a strategy to prepare for change, here are some things to think about. To be honest. It's not rocket science. It's very, very simple in many ways. OK, so five steps just to think about. Number one, analyze what's happening now. Now, remember, it's what's happening now and then what you want the future to look like. So if you're thinking about what's happening now and you are uh, you're thinking uh, and you also have that future vision, you need to identify the changes that are required to be able to move forward in a really positive, proactive way. You need to recognize any obstacles, recognize the things that could get in the way. All right. So issues, challenges. Is it a lack of funds? Is it the, a, a need to be able to change infrastructure? Is it, is it the fact that actually if you're going to pivot the business and go down a different route, you're going to have to change staff? Do you need uh, different um, uh, uh, different manpower, different technical capabilities? Are, do you have are you making assumptions based on the the customer uh, um, going with you or is the customer going to actually want what it is that the, the direction that you're going in okay so th there are lots of considerations there and any, and any obstacles what's going to get in the way of you being able to achieve your goal in those terms assess the risk and the cost of change okay so what is the de degree of risk in terms of pivoting, moving along uh, a different route. Think of the distant, different scenarios to help you map alternative paths, okay? So before progressing with significant change, just look at the pros and cons. What's the benefit? Because there are some businesses that I've worked with on assessing this have just gone, actually, we are just, just gonna stop. We are going to put everybody into furlough. We are gonna just wait it out and then reopen when, uh, when we're allowed to. OK, and that was the best thing for them. Others have pivoted. OK, a lot of foodie businesses immediately went online. Um, so there's a couple of breweries that I'm working with. Uh, I know great clients there. Um, they they uh, started up a, a delivery service. OK, from the back of the car to start with and then into a van. Um, you know, so actually and it opened up all sorts of avenues that they previously hadn't considered. Plan the way forward. So that you have all the information, you can decide a clear way forward and put the steps in place to integrate that change. OK, so five steps. 
all underpinned by the driving forces of that that vision of a of a of a better future state okay that drives the change but also you need to consider the fact there is going to be or could be resistance to change so this is where getting your team into the people that you're working with into that right frame of mind okay uh, or perhaps even you all right so, so so you're getting people into the right frame of mind. you're bringing them along that journey with you so it's not just about right this is what we're going to do off we go uh, and then people go oh i don't like that that doesn't sound like a good way but bring them along the whole journey involve them in the planning process okay so think about uh, how that might work so finally let's just consolidate in terms of um what we've been through okay the whole concept of change is psychological and then ultimately how you deal with that yourself so number one recognize your emotional response to change recognize how you think and feel about change and the particular contexts that you find yourself in the specific challenges that you're facing that require things to be done differently okay if you're not thinking positively and proactively you might want to just give yourself a stiff talking to or at least get into uh, um, start working with people that might be able to help you through that but of course it's not just you it's all the people that you work with as well. Identify the external impacts. What are the trends? What are the things that are happening in the wider environment that could impact on you? OK, think about that pestle uh, analysis. Think about the, um, the things that are happening in COVID. Think about the extent to which these changes now are going to be real in six months time or they're not going to be impact you in the same way. Consider how best to support you and your team OK, from a well-being point of view, from their health, from their psychological health from their physical health, how do you best support them so they're able to do what it is that you want them to do? Take the time to deeply understand the change that is needed. Is it needed? OK, and if there is change required, what do you need to do in terms of a strategy and what are the resources that require to be able to implement that change? How do you need to bring people in? to ensure that things are happening in the way that you want them to, okay? Focus on the things that you control. Don't worry about the things that you can't control because that's just gonna develop levels of anxiousness over which you can't do anything about that, okay? So focus on the things that you control and impact on those towards that positive, much more powerful future. And lastly, put a plan in place to manage the change. Work with the people that you are working, uh, that you have on your team, whether that be internal to your business or whether that be suppliers, whether that be, uh, you know, lead, whatever, okay? Put a plan in place to manage it and make sure that everybody that needs to implement change within that plan is aware of it, knows their place in it, and is able, has got all the tools that they need to be able to deliver that change, the change that you need to get yourself into a better place, both in the short and the long term. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. If there are any questions, I'm happy to uh, to have a conversation about those either here right now um, or if you want to find me on LinkedIn uh, and then drop me a line, more than happy to talk. Um, thank you ever so much. Uh, if there is uh, nothing else, then I will say goodbye. Thank you.